hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel so in today's video we are going to be looking at motion of an electron in an electric field so we are going to define an electron that enters an electric field that is generated between the plates of a capacitor and the electron is deviated by an angle theta as you can see in this figure so we are going to define the vertical distance traveled by the particle which is indicated as y as you can see on the diagram we are going to define the horizontal distance traveled by the electron which is x and we should know that this horizontal distance is just the length of our um, capacitor all right next we are going to define the acceleration of the particle at the point p that is ay we are going to um, define the electric field which maybe sometimes is given sometimes it's not given and finally or uh, the last but not the least we are going to find the time taken for this particle to travel the distance x or y we are going to call that time t and finally we are going to find the speed of the particle at the point p that is at any point within the uh, the electric field all right so this question came in the grace academy national olympia which was given to advanced level students it was a physics question and he had um, the questions were around five of them and they had options but in this video we are going to um, generalize the concepts all right so let's get started by first of all finding um, now according to our diagram you see that the electron enters the electric field with the speed u as you can see but now when it enters the electric field with speed u you see it is deviated by an angle theta so we see motion occurs in two directions in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction that's why we are going to find the horizontal distance covered and the vertical distance covered as well so um the horizontal velocity we are initial velocity we are going to call it u of x which is simply our u and the vertical velocity we are going to call it v of y u of y which is zero that's for the initial because it was launched with an initial velocity of u which was in the horizontal direction all right um at the point p the um, horizontal component of the final speed is given by v of x and the vertical component is given by v of y you are going to see how we can explicit v of x and v of y and then we determine v so let's start by finding the acceleration of the electron at the point p now we should know that uh, motion occurs in two directions in the vertical and the horizontal direction but in the horizontal direction there is no acceleration so acceleration is zero but in the vertical direction our acceleration is a of y remember that acceleration is a vector quantity so to get the acceleration we need to we need to take the magnitude of the acceleration that's the magnitude of of the acceleration that is the square root of acceleration in the x direction squared plus acceleration in the y direction squared but since there is no acceleration in the x direction the acceleration at the point p is just the acceleration in the y direction that's the vertical direction now we see that since the particle enters the electric field the force exerted that's the force experienced by the particle is the electric field strength times the charge of the particle as well it is also the mass of the particle times the vertical acceleration since there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction so we can equate it so because they see define the force since they balance up each other we get e times q e to give it to be equal to m times a y we can now get a y by dividing both sides by m and then since the charge of the electron is e we just replace and then we get our acceleration to be the electric field strength times the charge of the electron divided by the mass of the electron next we are going to look at the vertical distance traveled by the by the electron in this um, in this scenario as you can see that that vertical distance is y meaning the distance from the initial part of the particle to where it is after it is deviated by an angle theta all right so our vertical distance is given by we, we are just using the newton's the newton's laws of motion so y is equal to uyt plus half a y t squared but now we know that um, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero because it was um, initially moving in the horizontal direction with with initial velocity u so our u of x is still u but our u of y is zero because 
of the, the, the initial velocity of the particle is actually in the horizontal direction so our u of y is zero remember t is the time taken to cover the vertical distance and it is the same time taken um, used to cover the horizontal distance and our ay is what we have gotten above so it means our y will just give us half ay t squared we replace our ay with e times um, e on m then we multiply by t squared so this defines the vertical distance covered by the electron thirdly we are going to find the horizontal distance traveled by the electron which is x so we use our equation of motion the horizontal distance is ut of ux of t plus half ax t squared but now we know that there is there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction so it means our ax is zero and here we get our ux times t but our ux is still u because it's the horizontal the initial horizontal um speed of my particle and our t is the time taken to cover this horizontal distance next we are going to find the speed of the particle that's the speed of our electron at the point p we call the speed v now um our velocity because remember that speed is the magnitude of the velocity so our our velocity here which is v is a vector that's why it is in bold it's actually the velocity in the i direction plus the velocity in the j direction in the i direction as the horizontal direction is vx and in the vertical direction is vy so we write it as a vector and we should know that our speed is simply the magnitude of our velocity so we need to compute the velocities in the horizontal and in the vertical direction the velocity in the horizontal direction we use our newton's law of motion this is a um newton's equations of motion this um, the first one v of x is equal to u of x plus ax times t but we know that in the horizontal direction acceleration is zero so we just get v of x to be u of x and our u of x is simply u so it means our v of x is equal to u thus the final velocity in the horizontal direction is simply equal to the initial velocity in the horizontal direction next we find v of y which is u of y times e of y times t but we know that the initial velocity in the vertical direction is zero because it was moving in the horizontal direction with speed u so we, 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 we have our final velocity in the vertical direction to be zero plus a y times t our a y is simply what we had um, initially which is e times e on m and we multiply with t so we have gotten the velocities we have gotten the speeds in the vertical and the horizontal direction so with that said we can get our velocity which is um, v of x times i that is u i plus e e on m t times j now our speed is the magnitude of the velocity which is the square root of the sum of the squares of the i and the j components so our speed is u squared plus e plus e e on m times t or that squared so this is our speed furthermore we can relate um, the angle of the de of deflection that's the angle of deviation with these velocities our tan of theta will give us v of y on v of x because the angle here that's the angle between that's the angle that the the speed makes with the initial is theta that's the angle of deviation and it is simply the velocity the final velocity in the vertical direction divided by the final velocity in the horizontal direction the final velocity in the vertical direction is what we have here and in the horizontal direction is just u so in any case in, uh, in any case you can use you can model your your system like this and then you, you find what you are asked to find sometimes you are not going to be given the electric field strength you are going to be given the potential because this these are the plates of our capacitor they are parallel to each other so it can be given the distance between the plates of the capacitors and also the voltage across the capacitor you can use that to get the electric field strength that is the electric field strength is a voltage divided by the distance separating the plates of the capacitor so in any case you can um, just model your system and you look for what you are looking for all right so thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video